hashtag Undisputed Live. Here we go. First tweet. This is from Bill. Dion and Colorado coming back next season after the transfer <laughs> portal. There we go. That's the 1992 Dream yeah. Team. I now, agree. Right there. Everybody's utilizing the portal to their full advantage. Yeah. Dion's not the only one. No, but right? Yeah. Oregon, USC. You know, they're all Texas. They're all doing it. I know, but Dion's going to win the portal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's Next gonna up, be eight new offensive and defense. You got it. You got it. This is from Jason. This is me watching McCarthy play calling in the red zone. Is it too late to get Kellen Moore back? We got a coughing cat, coughing up maybe hairballs. I don't know. But that was me on Sunday also. I agree, Jason. <laughs> and number three. Got it right there. This is Keyshawn showing up for a cow for the Cowboys topic, and I, I think that's his all-time favorite quarterback, Drew Bledsoe, in that shot. Right? Yeah, who knows what I was doing right there? <laughs> I don't know. What I got into pretty you? Pretty excited. Keyshawn. Probably scored. Who knows? Probably scored. Most likely on a Me, pass what? from Drew Bledsoe. Yeah, no, I had a couple from him. Did you? Uh, you had a couple that should have been Cowboys right. Topic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to talk some sense in the Skip's brains here and there. You know, I will say this real quick about my Cowboys. McCarthy is not a motivator. Dak is not a dynamic leader. But you know what will motivate this team? Negative media talk. So you might get a game ball this week. Ne negative media talk. Yeah. So, when was the last time they won? What year was that? 95? 96. 95, right? 96 Super Bowl, but 95 season. Yeah, okay. It's 27 it, years ago. 27 yeah. years. Yeah. The media has been talking in your eyes, negative about the Dallas Cowboys, uh -huh. and they ain't got motivated yet, okay. then what makes you think they're going to get motivated after me trying to talk some sense into okay. you and Michael's but, head? But what happens is by the time the playoffs come and they make the playoffs, there's no negative media, right? Yeah, well, there, there is people like Richard and yeah. myself and many others that say, same old Cowboys. Here we go again. Okay, we'll watch what they do against yeah. Belichick. Right? Rain Dakota Watson, uh, I mean, uh, Prescott, uh, is listening to you. He's listening to you because uh, he, he said they've been you been keep putting him on the top. last couple years. Man, miss me with that. Let's talk Joe Burrow. I was surprised Joe Burrow played last night on his injured calf, but he played. He played pretty well, well enough that the Bengals survived at home over the Rams 19-16. to Not a scintillating football game, but... Burrow said his goal was to feed Jamar Chase, and did he ever. Chase caught 12 of 15 targets for 141. But here's what Chase said after the game. I was like, you got nuts, boy. I, I didn't want you to play. That just shows that Joe's hard-headed. But he's a football player, man. You can't knock him from being tough like that. They don't make too many quarterbacks tough like that. So, Richard, what did Joe Burrow show you last night? He didn't show me anything new. Joe Burrow's been tough. Yeah. I knew he was tough when he took nine sacks, a re playoff record, <laughs> during that Tennessee Titans playoff win that they got on their way to the Super Bowl. I said, this boy keeps getting back up he and does. found a way to win that game. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm getting sacked nine times and keep getting back up. I don't. That's a beating. That's a heck of a beating to take, and that's just the sacks. That's not even just the quarterback hits and how bruised up he was throughout that game. So I knew after that game, the, the toughness he had was, yep. was immeasurable. And so to see him go out in this ball game and try to push through an injury was very impressive, but it didn't surprise me. He's a tough person. Um, I'm concerned because I've had calf injuries and a calf injury is, is really nothing to, to, to snuff at. I know people are like, oh, it's just your calf. It, it, you feel that every single time you take a step, every, every time you get out of bed, every movement, every time you plant. And so he's toughing through this, and you hope that, that it's not as serious as we thought it was, and it was cool to see him out there. Yeah, it, it was cool to see him out there, and I'm glad he was able to get out of there healthy. They needed him to play. Oh, and the reason they needed him to play, there's two things. One, which is, which is, is, is big, but not as big. They opened up their ring of honor last night. OK, you don't want to go down to the Rams when you're doing all that with a loss. On top of that, yeah. you don't want to be 0-3, OK? If you start off at 0-3 with the Cleveland Browns are suddenly looking like mm. they can make some noise in the division, we already know how we feel about Baltimore, and then Pittsburgh ain't going to go nowhere. Mm. So you don't want to wind up starting the season at 0-3. It's just hard to come back. You, it's hard to come yeah. back. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, you get this going on with the coaches and the players and dissatisfaction, and all of a sudden we're losing. 
So he did the leadership thing despite getting the $270 plus million or whatever his contract was, despite all that. He went out there to make sure that they were not going to go 0-3, so I tipped my cap off to them. Now what they've got to do from a medical staff standpoint and a coaching standpoint is he doesn't need to practice all week long. Mm. He does not need to practice. Mental reps for him, pat and go for him. All he needs to do is rehab and mental reps so the next time he's on the field, there won't be much uh, uh, concern about what could potentially happen to the calf. Although it's still going to be there, like Richard yeah. said, it's something that you don't want to have to deal with. But if you take the necessary uh, precaution to make sure that he's continuing to get healthy, I don't have a problem with him playing and they winning a football game. Not at all, Skip. Okay. To me, playing with the calf in the state that it was in doesn't take toughness because it's not that painful. It's just nagging. It actually takes stupidity to play with the calf like that, and that's what he did. But he did it for the right reason. Right reasons. And they live to tell. Yeah. And God bless him. I'm knocking on wood for him. It, it, it didn't seem like he tweaked it. There, there's one play, but it looked like he tweaked more of his ankle when it got caught underneath on a near sack. But he survived it. But now we get to quarterback toughness. And it's hard to gauge because quarterbacks come in so many different packages. It's, it's what I've always said about Tom Brady. Off the field, he doesn't look like the toughest guy. He doesn't look like a macho football player. He doesn't, he doesn't match the description. He's not a big weight room guy. He, he ran the ugliest 40-yard dash in the history of the combine and took one of the ugliest shirtless pictures in the history of the combine. And yet... He got sacked more than anybody in the history of the game because he played till he was 45. But it, it's not pleasant to get sacked as much as he got sacked. And you have to keep getting up. Yeah. And you have to have mental and physical toughness to endure that kind of a beating. As Richard pointed out, when you get sacked nine times by the Titans, it, it's not fun to do that. It, it hurts. Maybe it doesn't hurt exactly the way you got hurt when you got clocked. Going over no, the middle. It, it hurts no matter how you hit the ground. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. Again, maybe you had a more violent collision in the secondary than he suffered in the pocket. It's it's hard, but it, it, usually you could see what was coming. Yeah. Sometimes he can't see what's coming. No, yeah. no, you can get hit from the backside in a whiplash standpoint. You could a guy could tee off on your helmet even if he doesn't hit helmet to helmet, he can hit you trying to get you, and that power and that blow comes yep. at a different level. Plus, you typically, if I'm being tackled by Richard Sherman, Richard Sherman is 210 pounds, and let's say I'm being tackled by Richard and the safety, that might be 400 pounds total. They might be getting hit by two dudes that's over 300. That's 600 pounds mm -hmm. plus. So yep. it's a different... It's a different tackling, so to speak, a different hit, so to speak, a different weight on top of him. He deserves the money that he's gotten. He certainly, you don't certainly, you certainly don't want to see him continue to get beat up. No. You know, they've got to do some things to protect him uh, up front, whether it's, it's sliding line protection, leaving guys in the chip, whatever the case may be. In the end, he is tough. That, that's for sure. You got to tip your hat off to him. But he, he doesn't look the part of tough off the field. Well, he's a big right? guy. He's not he's small. Tall, he's taller than you think. He's, yeah, he's taller. And when you talk, Tom Brady's uh, big, too. Uh, Tom Brady's six, not four. small. Yeah. So, you know, when what you're big and you're taking them hits, your body could sustain that more so than a smaller quarterback. Yeah. Go, Richard. I'm just trying to figure out what you mean. You don't look tough off the field. Well, now, he just looks more like a pretty curious. boy. He doesn't, doesn't look like the part of a macho football.